we want to find the surface area of the helisoid or spiral ramp with the vector equation shown here over the given region. Let's first take a look at this graphically. So here's the graph of the vector valued function. Our goal here is to find the surface area of this helisoid or spiral ramp. So because the surface is given as a vector valued function, we'll be using this formula here to find the surface area. So notice how we'll have to find the partial derivatives with respect to u and v, then find the cross product, then find the magnitude before we evaluate the double integral. So let's work on finding our partial derivatives. To find the partial of r with respect to u, we differentiate each component with respect to u, treating v as a constant. So the derivative of u cosine v with respect to u would just be cosine v. The derivative of u sine v with respect to u would be sine v. And the derivative of v with respect to u would be zero. And now for the partial of r with respect to v, we differentiate with respect to v, treating u as a constant. So the derivative of u cosine v with respect to v would be u times negative sine v or negative u sine v. The derivative of u sine v with respect to v would be u times cosine v. And the derivative of v with respect to v would just be one. And now we need to find the cross product of these two vector valued functions. So the partial of r with respect to u cross with the partial of r with respect to v is equal to the three by three determinant where the first row would be i, j, k. The second row would be the components of the partial of r with respect to u. So we have cosine v, sine v, zero. Third row is going to be the partial of r with respect to v. So we have negative u sine v, u cosine v, and one. Let's go ahead and evaluate this on the next slide. So using the expansion by minors method, for this first two by two determinant, we eliminate row one and column one. So we'd have sine v zero, u cosine v, and one. For the second two by two determinant, we eliminate row one and column two, which would give us cosine v zero, negative u sine v, and one. And for the last two by two determinant, we eliminate row one and column three. So we have cosine v, sine v, negative u sine v, and u cosine v. So the x component is going to be sine v times zero u cosine v, that's gonna be sine v. For the y component, the determinant is equal to cosine v minus zero, that's cosine v, but because of the minus here, we have negative cosine v. And for the z component, we have u cosine squared v minus negative u sine squared v, which is u cosine squared v plus u sine squared v. And notice how here this is going to simplify. If we factored out u, we'd have u times the quantity cosine squared v plus sine squared v, and cosine squared v plus sine squared v is equal to one, so the z component simplifies nicely to just u. So the partial of r with respect to u cross with the partial of r with respect to v is equal to the vector valued function with the x component of sine v, y component of negative cosine v, and the z component of just u. So going back to our first slide, now that we have the cross product, now we need to find the magnitude of this cross product. And let's do this on the next slide. So we'd have the square root of sine v squared plus negative cosine v squared plus u squared. And notice how this is gonna simplify nicely. We'll have the square root of, this is sine squared v, plus here we'll have cosine squared v, plus u squared. Of course, this is equal to one. 
So the magnitude of the cross product is equal to the square root of 1 plus u squared. So going back to our first slide again, we now have all the information we need in order to set up this double integral to find the surface area of the helisoid. The surface area, S, is equal to the double integral of, again, the magnitude of the cross product is equal to the square root of 1 plus u squared. Now for differential A, let's use du dv. Now for the limits of integration, for u, we integrate from 0 to 1. And for v, we integrate from 0 to pi. Now let's go ahead and evaluate this on the next slide. When we integrate with respect to u, though, it's very challenging to find this antiderivative, so we're going to use the integration formula shown here below from the integration table. But to make it better fit this formula, let's rewrite this as the quantity u squared plus 1 rather than 1 plus u squared. Looking at the integration formula below, notice how a squared is equal to 1, and therefore a just equals 1. So now we integrate with respect to u, so we're going to have 1 half, and then we'll have u times the square root of the quantity u squared plus 1 plus a squared, of course, is just 1, so we have natural log absolute value of u plus the square root of the quantity u squared plus 1. So all of this is the antiderivative, and we're integrating with respect to u from 0 to 1. So now we have 1 half times integral from 0 to pi, and now again we're going to substitute 1 for u and then 0 for u. So when u is equal to 1, notice how here we're just going to have 1 times the square root of the quantity 1 squared plus 1, that's the square root of 2, and then plus natural log absolute value of 1 plus, this is going to be again the square root of 1 squared plus 1 or the square root of 2, so this is the value when u equals 1, minus when u is 0, notice how we're going to have 0 here. So we'll have 0 plus natural log. And again, if u is 0, we have 0 plus the square root of 1, which is just 1, so natural log 1. But notice how natural log 1 is equal to 0, so this simplifies out. Notice how all this is just a constant. So let's write this as 1 half times the quantity square root 2 plus natural log, absolute value of 1 plus square root 2, all of this times integral from 0 to pi of dv, or if we want 1 dv. And now we integrate with respect to v. Well, of course, the antiderivative of 1, there's... well, the antiderivative of 1 with respect to v would just be v. So this gives us 1 half times the quantity square root 2 plus natural log epsilon value of 1 plus square root 2 times, well, of course, when v is pi, we have pi. When v is 0, we have 0. So the exact value of the surface area is equal to 1 half pi times the quantity square root 2 plus natural log. We actually don't need the absolute value here because that's positive. So natural log of 1 plus square root 2. Let's also go to decimal approximation for this surface area. So the approximate value is 3.6059. And this is surface area, so the units would be square units. Here for the approximate value, as well as here for the exact surface area. which is the surface area of this surface here. I hope you found this helpful.